welcome to my channel. If you're new, my name is Christina, and today we have another round of the Mystery Box Challenge. If you're not familiar with the Mystery Box Challenge, it was created from Courtney over at Creative on the Cheap. She gets a group of us DIY YouTubers together, and each one of us is assigned another person from that group that we have to send a box full of crafting goodies to. In each box, there are two challenge items that have to be a little bit difficult to craft with, as well as a twist every time around. Courtney has been having guest hosts for each round, and this time I got to be the guest host, which means I got to choose the theme of this box as well as all of the stipulations. For the theme, I chose for it to be falling in love with fall since we are about to be in the fall season. And then for everything that we have to send, I chose to have three of the items as sender's choice. One of them had to be an item made of wood, something pumpkin, something orange, fall floral, and then some form of fabric. For the challenge items, for the first one, I wanted it to be something random from your garage. And then for the second challenge item, it had to be something from the beauty section. For the twist, I thought it would be really fun if everyone in the group was assigned a different fall theme that they had to create a DIY for. So for example, it would be like pumpkin patch or apple picking or corn maze. But to make things fair, I did have Courtney go ahead and pick my theme and she chose mine to be Hayride. I did go ahead and send my box over to Courtney over at Creative on the Cheap this round. And then the box that I'm opening here today is from Lisa Kennedy, better known as Dollar Mom. But before I get into opening up the box, I do want to tell you guys about the voting feature. You guys, there are so many different categories to vote for and it is super fun. There is a cheat sheet that Courtney created. So if you guys want to take notes while you're watching our videos, you can use that cheat sheet. I will have a link down in my description box if you guys want to print that off and use it. I will also have a link down in my description box to the playlist for everyone's videos here in the mystery box challenge. Now for the voting, it is on August 30th and then it goes until September 6th. And then on September 8th, Courtney will have the big award show where she will announce all of the winners. Let's get into opening up the box that Lisa sent. I've got it here. I don't want to show you too much because I don't want her address to show. All right, turn it around here. First thing I noticed on top is, looks like she has everything wrapped in this really pretty scarf. I'm already excited about this. This is so pretty and just screams fall. So thanks Lisa for sending that. And then I'm gonna turn the box around here so I can get into it a little bit better. All right, first thing on top, we have one of these book stacks from Dollar Tree. Happy about this one. We've got some fall floral. These would be good to use. I'm trying to think as I go along opening up everything. All right, we have the wrapped items right here. I'm gonna set those aside for later. Those are the challenge items. Okay, so it looks like more fall floral. Very cute. All right, we've got some bows. Is this the something orange item? I'm trying to think. There's a lot you can do with these. So I'm excited for those. Something wood. Little acorn. All right. We've got frames and tags. Oh, these are cute. They're like all fall themed. These are really cute like these. Then we've got a looks like love like ladder. I'm already coming up with ideas I think for this one. I like this. And then oh I'm just sitting here staring at this item because I'm kicking myself for including this in one of the items that we had to send because I didn't realize how many different things that could possibly be sent. And it looks like Lisa sent me some pumpkin pie jelly bellies for my something pumpkin. 
Lisa, come on. <laughs> what am I going to make with these? I don't know, but that was very clever. So I will have to think on these. This is probably going to be super challenging. I don't know. Why did I include that? All right. Getting back into the box. Oh, this must be the fabric item she sent. It's like, oh, it's so soft. I like that too. You could do a lot with that. Now it looks like we have, she sent me some paper that she wrapped her um, twist, not twist items, her challenge items with. Really cute paper. Thanks, Lisa, for sending these. To, I wish I would have had that when I sent Courtney's stuff. I could have wrapped her stuff in that. But um, Let's go ahead and open up the first challenge item. I'm not sure if this one is from the garage or the beauty section, but I'll just open this one up first. Oh, this is from the beauty section. Oh, it's a makeup brush holder with suction cups. So this is what it looks like. <laughs> oh boy. This is gonna be a really hard box, I think. I don't know. All right, so that's the first challenge item. So this one must be the something random from her garage. like wrapped in a paper plate. I'm kind of scared. Oh, okay. So we have like this just random little hook thing here. All right, I'm not so scared about this. This I think I can work with. These, hmm, I don't know. I have like a week to think about this before I have to get the video up. So I'll be thinking for the next few days what I'm gonna make with that and then trying to figure it out. I don't know, but that was everything in the box. I'm really excited to see what I can come up with. I can't wait to see what everyone else comes up with and let's go ahead and get crafting. For the first DIY today, I'm gonna to be starting with this unfinished wooden acorn that Lisa sent in my box. I'm also gonna be using a second acorn that I already had in my craft stash. The first thing I'm gonna do is just go through and pop off those wooden slats because I'm only gonna be using the three middle ones from each acorn. So once I have them popped off, I'm then going to be cutting them down. As you can see, I've already cut down the three from the acorn that I had. And then I'm just going to do the same thing for the one that Lisa sent me. I need to get off that curved edge and then also the hole that was on the other end. So here I just went through and used my snips to cut off the ends of the wood and then I used the ones that I had already cut as a guide just so that I could make sure that all of my wood slats are exactly the same size. I now have my wood slats all cut down. I am using five. Now I'm going to be painting them all a different color. This one here is yellow ochre. Then I did one in Pueblo, which is the orange one that you can see. I'm also doing one in the walnut wood tint then one in true burgundy and then the very last one is a paint from the crafters collection from hobby lobby and it is a gray chalk paint once the paint was all dry i'm then going to be transferring on some of these fall of vinyl words that i cut out on my cricut if you guys are interested in these i will have a link down in my description box so that you can cut them out yourself so once I have all of my fall words transferred on all of my slats, it was then time to start putting my sign together. So here you can see I'm just placing hot glue on the bottom of each slat and then I'm kind of just overlapping each one together to form my sign. And then once I had that done, I did want to use some of the scrap pieces that I had left over from the acorns. So here I'm just using those on the back side and I'm hot gluing them to the back of my sign just to give it a little bit of an extra hold. 
Once I have those on, I found this wooden stake that had ripped off of a sign that I had, but I've just been saving it and I thought it would be perfect for this project. So here I'm using some hot glue to attach it to the very back of my sign. Next, I'm gonna be adding my details. Here I'm taking some corn husk from Hobby Lobby and I'm tearing them into strips. And then I'm gonna be taking a few of those strips to form a bundle. And here you can probably tell I'm making a small corn stalk. So I just took those husks, wrapped them with a piece of raffia, and then tied that off in a knot. Once I had my mini corn husk made, I'm then just gonna be attaching it using some hot glue to the left side of my sign. I'm then also gonna be adding one of these wooden leaves from Joanne Fabrics. I just cut it off of the little pick here and then I'm gonna be hot gluing it in the top right-hand corner of my autumn slat. I'm then creating a really small raffia bow and I'm gonna be attaching that on the bottom of my leaf. And then for a little extra added detail, I added a button right in the center of my bow. And that is it for this project. And this is what it looks like all finished. I am really happy with how this turned out. It went from acorn to a really stylish fall sign. Now moving into DIY number two. For this one, I'm gonna be using one of these faux apples that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. And I'm first just gonna be removing the stem in the top of the apple. I'm then using my drill with a larger drill bit and drilling a hole in the very top of the apple because I do need it to be larger than what it was. I'm then painting my apple with an imperial red color from Folk Art just because I wanted to change the red color that it was. Then I'm gonna be using these pumpkin pie jelly beans that Lisa sent. So the only thing I could really think to do was to chop them up. So here I'm just using a cutting board with a knife and chopping them into very small pieces. You can probably already tell that I'm gonna be trying to make these jelly beans look like nuts. But before I can add on those nuts, I did need to add the caramel portion of my apple. So here I'm using a cinnamon colored paint and just painting a few coats of this on the bottom portion of my apple. I'm then gonna be putting in this stick that I had in my craft stash. I'm just hot gluing it in the center of my apple. And now here's the tedious part. I'm going through and using a tiny bit of hot glue to attach every single one of these pieces of jelly bean. Let me tell you, I had tried doing like where you mix Mod Podge and paint and then normally people will add like bird seed to give you like the faux nut look. Well, that did not work. So here I just decided to hot glue each individual piece on and then I went through and just painted each one so that it would look like a nut color. I'm then gonna be using this small tag that came in the paper pack that Lisa sent, only I needed the stripes to be red instead of orange, so here I'm just using a red marker to go right over those orange stripes so that it will make it go more with my apple. Then I'm taking a piece of brown cardstock and just cutting that down so that it is a little bit smaller than the striped tag. And then on that piece, I'm just gonna be taking a pen and writing out the word apples. I'm then using some of my tacky glue to attach that right in the center of the striped tag. Then I'm gonna be adding this red and white checked ribbon and just creating a bow on the top of my stem. And then I'm gonna be attaching my tag, only I did need to add a small hole. So here I'm just using one of my Cricut tools to punch a little hole in the side of the tag. And then I'm using a small piece of raffia through that hole and then just tying it around the stem of my apple. And here is my finished caramel apple. Even though it took me a long time to glue on each and every one of those nuts, I think it turned out super cute. Next is DIY number three. And for this one, I'm gonna be using this love ladder that Lisa sent in the box. And the first thing I'm doing is just removing the greenery that was on the front. And then I'm gonna be flipping the ladder over and very carefully removing the love word from the back of the ladder. 
I also needed to remove the staples that were on the front, so I just popped those out and removed them with some pliers. Then I'm going to be taking my ivory colored chalk paint from Waverly and I'm painting the entire ladder with this color. I wanted my ladder to look a little bit distressed, so here I'm just going to be using a dark brown paint and going along all of the edges of the ladder and then dry brushing over all the other portions of the ladder. I'm going to be using this Grateful, Thankful, and Blessed Unfinished Wood Letters from Hobby Lobby. For the Thankful one, I'm using a yellow ochre. Then for the Grateful word, it is in True Burgundy. And then the Blessed word is in uh, just gray from Hobby Lobby. For my detail pieces, I'm using these wood leaves from Joanne Fabrics. I'm using a medium yellow one and then a smaller orangey one. But before I add those, I do need to attach my words. So here I'm just using some hot glue to attach them. I did grateful first, then thankful, then blessed. And then I made two small raffia bows and these are gonna go in the bottom portion of my leaves just for some extra detail. So here I attached my larger yellow leaf at the top and then you can see I'm just adding my raffia bow at the bottom of the leaf and then I also added a small button in the center of that bow and then on the bottom portion of the ladder is where I added the darker orange colored leaf with that same raffia bow and then a small button right in the center of the bow. And this is the ladder piece all finished. I just placed it on one of the hooks I have by my front door. It went from a love ladder to a really cute fall decorative accent piece. Next up, we have a DIY number four. So for this one, I'm starting with one of these crates from Dollar Tree. I first just removed the tag from the bottom and then I'm gonna be using my walnut colored wood tint to stain the entire crate. You'll notice I am gonna be changing my idea as I go while I'm doing this project. I have eight wooden wheels here, but I'm actually only gonna be using four of them. And I just put them on one of the dowels from Dollar Tree to make it easier to paint. And then I'm just painting all four of my wheels that I'm using with a black chalk paint. I'm also gonna be using two of the dowels from Dollar Tree, and I'm also painting these black. I then need to make my dowels a little bit shorter so that they fit on the bottom of my crate better. So here I'm just using my snips to cut a little bit off of both of the dowels that I'm going to be using. Then I needed to finish my wheels. So here I'm using these small wooden caps from Hobby Lobby and I'm using some hot glue and then just placing them in that hole. And then I used a hammer to make sure that they're like in there really well and then once I had them in four of the wheels I'm then going to be painting them white. Next I can start placing my wheels on the dowels to create the tires for my wagon. I just placed hot glue in the hole that was on the wheel and then put the dowel inside and I did that for both of the dowels with two wheels each. So I have four wheels total for my wagon. Now I just need to make sure that the dowels and the tires are attached to the bottom and the sides of my wagon. So here I'm just placing hot glue on the bottom of the crate and around that dowel to make sure that it stays in place. This is where I'm gonna be adding that hook that Lisa sent in my box. This was a challenge item, the item from her garage. And I'm gonna be painting the entire hook with a black chalk paint. Then I'm gonna be attaching this hook on the bottom of my wagon. I'm using hot glue to attach it. I know, probably should have used something a little more, I don't know, better. <laughs> so once I have the glue on, I did use some duct tape to hold it into place until the glue like fully set. And then I'm gonna be adding some details to the inside of my wagon. I'm using some of these mini hay bales from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna be just hot gluing them in what looks like rows for seating on a hay ride. But as you can see, I already had some like hay on the bottom. I used one of the hay bales from Dollar Tree that I just cut open and then added some of that like shredded hay bale to the bottom before I started adding these. 
I thought it would be really cute to add some corn stalks to my wagon. So here I'm taking some of these corn husks from Hobby Lobby and I'm just tearing them apart to make smaller strips and then gathering them together, kind of twisting them up. And then I took a piece of jute and just tied that around the center to create my corn stalk. I did do this four different times so that I could have a stalk for each side of my wagon. So now that I have them all made, I'm just going through and using hot glue on each corner of the wagon to attach each corn stalk. I wanted to add a sign to my wagon and I had this cupcake kit from Dollar Tree and they had these cute little signs inside. So here I'm taking this one that says pick your own pumpkins and I'm just going to be attaching that to the inside of my wagon. For this project, I'm also going to be using one of these unfinished wooden trucks from Hobby Lobby and I'm just going to be start by painting the truck portion with a true burgundy paint from Folk Art and then for the bed of the truck, I'm using my walnut wood tint to stain it. For the wheels, obviously I'm painting those black and then the center of the wheels, I painted those with my ivory colored paint from Waverly. I'm then going to be using this small screw in hook on the back end of my truck. So I just centered it and then screwed it right in. And this is going to be where I can attach that wagon I created to my truck. I'm then going to be using this Farm Fresh Pumpkins vinyl on the side of my truck. I just cut this out on my Cricut and here I'm just getting it transferred to the side. And then I'm not sure if you guys know, but this is my twist um, project sure you guys probably already could tell but next I'm going to be using some of these unfinished wood pumpkins these ones are from Dollar Tree and I'm just painting them with an orange colored paint and then for the stems I'm using a dark brown paint now it's the fun part where I can add all the little details to my truck I'm using some hot glue and some shredded hay from one of the Dollar Tree hay bales on the bottom of the bed of my truck. And then once I had that added, I did take one of these mini hay bales from Dollar Tree and I just cut it in half because I wanted to have some smaller ones in the bed of my truck. And then I'm just hot gluing both of those mini hay bales down kind of like more towards the front of the truck. And then I just started adding my pumpkins and I did hot glue them in so that they stayed in place and didn't move around. So I attached my wagon to my truck, but now I'm adding more details. I'm taking these four wheat pieces that I had in my craft stash, and I thought it would be really cute to add them like in the center of all of my corn stalks. So I just hot glued them on the inside of the wagon. And here is my twist project, my hayride all finished. And I was also able to incorporate the challenge hook that Lisa sent me. And I think it turned out so cute and I can't wait to display it throughout the fall season. Moving right along into DIY number five. For this one, I'm going to be using the scarf that Lisa sent in my box. And I'm going to be creating a pillow with it. So here I'm also going to be using a pillow insert and I'm just going to be removing the pillow insert from the packaging, obviously. And then I did remove the large tag that was on the insert. I'm then just kind of figuring out how much of the scarf that I'm going to need to create my pillow cover. So once I have that figured out, I just cut off the remaining parts of the scarf that I do not need for this project. Here I had my pillow insert on the part of the scarf where all of the lines would match up perfectly and I started by just folding in the two sides and then I used hot glue to attach those sides of the scarf to the pillow cover. Yes, I know there's probably a better way to do this, but this is just what I did for this project. It is just a decorative piece. It's not like I'm going to be using this pillow. So next I'm just going to be folding up the bottom portion of the scarf and then the top portion of the scarf here. And then I just use some hot glue to attach the pillow or the scarf all together. And then to add a little bit of detail, I decided to use three wood buttons and then I used a piece of jute to go through the holes on the button so it looks like there is thread. And then I just tied that jute off on the back. And then again, I did that for three of them. And then I hot glued those buttons onto the front of my pillow. 
This is my pillow all finished. I think it turned out actually really good. Let me know what you guys think. Do you like this one? Now we are into the sixth project for today. I'm gonna to be using this faux book stack that Lisa sent. This is from Dollar Tree. And I went ahead and painted the entire book stack with a gray colored paint from Hobby Lobby. I'm then gonna be using three unfinished wood pieces that I had in my stash. And I'm also painting all three of them with the same gray colored paint. I'm then going to be attaching one of the wood pieces to the side of my book stack and then I did the same thing with a second piece of wood. I just attached that one to the other side of the book stack. Then for the third piece of wood, I'm attaching it going along the top wood pieces and as you can see, this is going to be a pumpkin stand. Here I have the stencil in my stash. I think it's from Amazon. If it is, I'll try to have it linked down below, but I just taped on over that wood piece where it would say pumpkins and then I stenciled it using an ivory colored paint. I did get a little bit of the ivory on the gray, but no worries, I just touched up that gray paint. After I had everything all painted, it was time to start adding some details. So here I'm using this orange and cream color ribbon and I'm just cutting very small triangles on this ribbon because I'm gonna be creating a banner for the top of my crate. As you can see, it's gonna look like this and I did a pretty long strip. Once I had that strip all cut out, I'm then gonna be hot gluing it to a piece of jute. It was then time to attach my banner to the top of my crate and here I just used hot glue to attach it and I had it going underneath my word pumpkins. Then I'm gonna add some more details of these little like amber colored glass jars I had in my craft stash and I needed to have a riser for them. So I'm taking two of these wood block cubes from Dollar Tree and I'm gluing them together. And then I'm gonna be gluing that right on the top of my crate, kind of like in a diagonal. So once I have that little riser added, I then started attaching my amber colored bottles. I did two of them on top of the wood blocks and then I did two more of them right in front and these are what's gonna be my apple cider. So now that I have those on, I am gonna be going through that paper pack that Lisa sent and just getting a small piece of paper and just cutting it down into like a rectangle because this is just going to be where I write the word cider. I then had this a little scrap of wood piece in my stash so I cut it down to the length that I needed and then I hot glued my paper onto the top of that piece of wood and then I'm going to be attaching it right next to those glass bottles so that everyone knows it's supposed to be apple cider. I'm also using this pumpkin patch tag that came in that paper pack that Lisa sent and I'm just cutting the top portion off of it because I'm gonna be creating what looks like a sign. I used another piece of scrap wood, hot glued that pumpkin patch piece on there and before I add it, I am gonna be painting some pumpkins to add to my crate and here I'm just painting them with an orange color and then for the stems of the pumpkins, I did paint them with a dark brown. Then for my pumpkins, I did wanna have them raised a little bit so I used one of those mini hay bales from Dollar Tree and placed it on the top of the crate added some pumpkins around and on top of the mini hay bale. And then I'm also gonna be using two more of those mini hay bales. I kind of staggered them and then I'm hot gluing that to the front of the crate and then just adding some more of those pumpkins on top of the hay bales. And what would be a fall craft without another mini corn stalk? <laughs> so here I'm using those corn husk from Hobby Lobby. I shredded them into smaller pieces, gathered them up, and just tying a knot around the bottom of them with a piece of jute. I did use a piece of wheat that I cut down from my craft stash, and I'm going to be hot gluing that right in the back of the corn stalk just to give it some extra detail. I then hot glued that stalk on the left side of my crate and then here I just added my pumpkin patch sign. And this is the pumpkin stand all finished. Like how cute is this? I will definitely be using this in my fall decor this year and I would love to know is this something you would recreate? 
Now moving into DIY number seven. For this one, this is the second challenge item. This was from the beauty section, and I'll tell you what, I thought on this for so long, and this is about the best I could come up with. <laughs> I cut off the suction cups, and I did end up only using one of them, but I'm also gonna be using um, this Hello Autumn piece of paper from the paper pack I just recently picked up from Joann's, and I'm using one of these unfinished wood leaves from Hobby Lobby. And I made it to where the Hello Autumn would be right in the center of my leaf. And then I just cut that out. I then applied Mod Podge on the entire front of my leaf. And then I took that paper and placed it over top of the leaf right where the word Hello Autumn would be in the center. Just pressed that down really well. And then I did end up going back through and cutting off some overlapping paper and then once it dried down a little bit I took some sandpaper and I started sanding my little heart away because this did take me a while but I just sanded away the excess paper that was around all of the little cutouts on the leaf then once I had that done I took some more Mod Podge and just painted that right over top and let that completely dry I then took some of my E6000 glue, placed that on the back of my leaf along with some hot glue, and then I'm going to be taking that suction cup and just attaching it to the back of the leaf here. I'm also going to be using one of these frames from Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to be taking out the backing of the frame and leaving the glass inside. I'm using this a really pretty cardstock and I'm just going to be placing the backing of the frame onto the cardstock and tracing the exact size that I'm going to need so that I can cut down my paper. So now that I know what size I need, I'm just using some scissors to cut out that cardstock and then I'm just placing the cardstock into my frame and then putting the backing back into the frame. And because the front of this frame is glass, it's perfect for a suction cup. So here I'm just taking my Hello Autumn suction cup leaf and pressing it down on the glass to attach it. This is what it looks like all finished and I am so surprised at how cute this looks. I would love to know what would you guys have done with the makeup brush holder? Moving right along into the eighth project for today, I'm going to be starting with one of these pumpkins from Dollar Tree. And the first thing I did was just remove the stem of the pumpkin and the tag. I'm then going to be using one of these, I think it's like berries. <laughs> this is one of the items that Lisa sent me. I'm picking off all of these little styrofoam balls and then I'm going to be just cutting them in half. Now they're not all going to look exactly the same size, but I'm going to do my best to make them look the same. So next I'm going to go through and hot glue them in all of the little indent portions of my pumpkin just going down in straight lines. This is going to add some detail to my pumpkin and I'm hoping it's going to look like wood beads. So here I have all of my pumpkin covered in them and now I'm just going through and using my ivory colored chalk paint from Waverly and painting over all of those styrofoam pieces and my entire pumpkin. I'm then taking several strands of raffia and I tied them together in a knot and then I'm just going to be hot gluing that knot on the inside of where the stem would go for my pumpkin. I'm then going to be taking those and just having them run down along those faux beads in straight lines. So this is just going to add a lot of detail to my pumpkin and maybe kind of hide how wonky <laughs> those styrofoam pieces look on the sides. So I continued to do that over and over again for each strip of those faux beads that I have on each side of them. After I had all of my raffia added, I went through with a dark brown chalk paint and here I'm just distressing my styrofoam pieces to make them look a little bit more like actual wood beads. I then went through with two strands of a chew and I did the same thing. I just poked those in 
the top of my pumpkin where the stem would go using some hot glue and some tweezers and then I'm going to be taking those and just wrapping them down around the areas of the pumpkin that are still showing some of the ivory color just to add a lot of detail to my pumpkin. So once I had it wrapped down one side, I would have it come and wrap up the other side and I did that for two different strips using the jute. And then after I had the jute added, this is gonna be where I start adding those ribbon pieces that Lisa sent. So instead of using the more like orangey side, I used the side that was a little bit more of like a muted down golden orange, if that makes sense. And for all of the remaining areas of my pumpkin that still had the white is where I added all of the ribbon. And then you can see here, I'm just adding a wood stem to the top of my pumpkin with a piece I had in my craft stash. And then I'm using one of these flowers that Lisa sent and I'm just gonna be attaching it with some hot glue next to the stem on my pumpkin. I then created a super simple raffia bow and attached that next to the flower on the front of my pumpkin. I then added an unfinished wood button right in the center of my bow and then a smaller button right in the center of that one. And this is the pumpkin all finished. It actually came together pretty nicely. I didn't have high hopes in the beginning, but I'm loving the look of it now. Next, we're on DIY number nine. For this one, I'm gonna be using this yellow and orange checked fabric. This is from Hobby Lobby and I did already have it in my craft stash. I'm just going through and cutting several strips of this fabric out because I'm gonna be creating kind of like a rag sunflower. So I'm also using a mason jar lid that I had in my craft stash. And here you can see I'm just tying on my strips of fabric around my lid. I just continued to do that over and over again until I had it completely covered in fabric. I then moved the fabric aside a little bit because I did need to have a hole in my mason jar lid. So here I just took my drill and drilled a hole in the lid so that I could place my dowel in there for the stem of my sunflower. So once I got that added, I then just used some of my walnut wood tint to stain my dowel rod. I had already made the center of my flower with the brown fabric that Lisa sent, but it was too large. So here I'm gonna make a second one. I used a smaller lid that I had, but I didn't wanna actually use the lid here because I needed it for something. So I just used it to trace on a piece of cardboard that I had, and then I'm cutting out that cardboard for the size that I actually need. I'm then just placing the cardboard on that brown, like furry fabric that Lisa sent cutting it down to the size that I need to fit for the center of my flower. And then here I'm gonna be hot gluing some polyfill onto the cardboard so that I can have the center of my flower be like kind of a little bit padded and stick out a bit. So once I have that on, I'm then placing it with the poly side down on the back of the fabric. And then I'm just going through and hot gluing that fabric on the back of the cardboard to make the center of my flower. The stem of my flower was a little too long, so I did end up cutting it down. And then here I'm placing hot glue on the inside portion of my flower to attach the center. And I just press that right in. I'm then using this wood block that I've already stained and I'm drilling a hole right in the center. I'm then adding some hot glue and then placing my flower stem inside. Here I had this floral pick from Joann's and it had these like tan leaves attached to it. And I thought these would be maybe kind of cute to add for the little flower, or not, gosh, I cannot talk today. <laughs> the little leaves for my flowers. So here I cut them down and then I'm just hot gluing them on the back of my doll. I had some mustard colored raffia in my craft stash, which I believe is from Hobby Lobby. Here I'm just creating a bow and then I'm gonna be attaching that bow at the bottom of my stem. I'm then attaching an unfinished wood button and then another smaller button right in the center of that. 
This is the sunflower all finished. I really wasn't sure what to do with that brown furry fabric. I thought I had some ideas at first, but those were a no-go. So this is the best that I could come up with. And I think it turned out pretty cute. Next is the 10th and final DIY for today. For this one, I'm starting with this unfinished wood framed piece from Hobby Lobby and I'm going through and I'm staining the entire frame and back portion of it with a walnut wood tint. I'm then gonna be using this wrapping paper that Lisa sent and I'm just getting it centered to where I wanna cut the paper and use the paper in the center of my frame. I then went through and applied some Mod Podge on the entire inside of my framed piece. I then took that wrapping paper and just placed it right down on top of that glue and just made sure that I didn't rip the paper and that I had most of the bubbles all out. Now you can see I'm going to be using this Happy Fall wood cutout from Hobby Lobby. And this is where I just changed my mind a couple different times. I originally went through and painted it a couple different colors. And what you see here is not what the end result is going to be. But once I had it painted, I had attached it. And then I used this orange and cream color checked ribbon. And I thought since the paper was busy, why not go even busier and add some checked uh, ribbon. So here I add the ribbon at the top of or underneath the frame, like over top of the wrapping paper. And then I did the same thing at the bottom, like you can see. Then I thought it would be cute to add a little bow. This one is already pre-made from Hobby Lobby and I attached it on the top left-hand side. This is the piece all finished. As you can see, I ended up going with a little bit more of a bright orange to match the ribbon, and I'm really happy with how this turned out. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, I hope that you will consider subscribing. Please be sure to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any future videos. I would love to hear in the comments down below which project from today was your favorite. And don't forget to go and click on the link for the playlist so that you can watch everybody's videos that was in the mystery box challenge today. I really hope that I'll see you guys back in my next video. Thank you so much for watching.